What is up, everyone? Today's episode is awesome. I'm your host, Jason Rigby. It's Higher Density Living. We're going to welcome back for part two of Mackenzie Belcastro. She's a transformable coach who empowers individuals to create aligned lives where they feel seen, purposeful, and well-nourished on both a soul and financial level. So we're going to get into that today. Higher self and finances. That'll be fun, guys. <laughs> With training in somatics under Dr. Peter Levine, somatic trauma therapy. Hopefully, I'm saying these names right. With Dr. Ariel Schwartz. And an accreditation via New York City's IIN, McKinsey brings a holistic approach to personal growth. She is also a Reiki energy practitioner, yoga nidra teacher, and the host, what we're going to talk about today. So stop what you're doing right now, pause this real fast, and I want you to go to Apple or Spotify and type in the North Star Podcast and sign up for that, where she shares her insights on living authentically and with intention. Join us for a profound discussion on self-expression, energy alignment, and the journey to become your truest self. Thank you, Mackenzie, for being on today. Thank you for having me back. I need to copy that intro. That was fabulous, <laughs> absolutely fabulous. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, I got it off your I got it off your website, and then I asked ChatGPT to give me to write me an intro. Of we course. talked about that earlier on there. Mm -hmm. You guys got to use the latest technology. I want to talk to you today. You you wrote a podcast. You, uh, you probably wrote it, but you, uh, it was like 52 minutes, 51 minutes of you just talking straight nonstop. No, it, it was great though. But you said something that I think really sparked, and, and I'm going to get into this about how to live in your higher safe self, not just like words, not just generic macro type things, but specifically things that you can do. And you broke it down to kind of like August. Here's what you can do monthly. But I want us to talk about the higher self and things you can do. But before we do that, your podcast bio says this, and, and I think this will sum up what we're going to try to do today. It says your dreams exist for a reason. Every yearning, every daydream, they exist for a reason. There is a divine intelligence within you that is uniquely yours. That divine intelligence is the higher self. When you were going over that podcast and kind of ruminating in your mind, how you're going to talk. Did you just let it flow? Was it just something that happened or had you been thinking about it for a while? You know, the way things seem to come through for me is it's usually not much before I record that I have the hit, the download, what, whatever you want to call it to do that. I might have in some cases I'll make like a few notes, but usually it's just like five minutes, maybe. Or I'll just like go right into it because so much has just like come through me and I'm like, ah, oh, I need to, I need to get this out. Usually there are certain things that have happened in life. Like you mentioned, um, when we were chatting before, like restaurants and stuff like that, there are moments that in the moment it sticks out to me and I'm like, I'm going to hold on to this for later when I can, you know, utilize it for something. Yeah, that's awesome. So whenever you like challenge yourself. Because I know in the po in, in the podcast you do this a lot. Like in your podcast, you talk about challenging yourself, and you know, like embodying a particular energy. What brought it about for you to do it for like a month? Can you kind of explain that process? How it went through your head? Yeah, I guess um, there's there's this part of me, and maybe this is is something that people share who are passionate about growth. I get really inspired by these, these concepts, these long standing, you know, ideas of like a month long challenge and things that other people might be like, oh, or like cheesy or whatever for me, for whatever reason, I'm like, oh, yeah, let's do this. Like that, that sounds like a fun way. Also, in all honesty, like July had been, um, you know, vacation mode. And I was like, you know, that's great. And it's, and it's lovely, but I'm also like very lit up by, by kind of, tuning in and having certain personal goals or professional goals and so it was more like it came through to me the thought of like what would it be like to have a month-long challenge and it lit me up so much from within that I was like I want to do this I it, it it just like inspires me so deeply so that's the short of it it's not like a super intense thought process how do you believe like those practices, like, you know, whether it's like a month long challenge to walk every day or whatever it may be, because I've done those too. Mm -hmm. How do you believe this practice connects you to your higher self? Right. Well, I guess in this, in this particular case, although really with anything, I guess I would assume <clears throat> if the goal is quite intentional that it's, 
coming from that higher self, right? Like even if it quote unquote just is, and I don't mean just in any kind of way, but even if it's like, okay, I, I want to walk, whatever it is people are doing these days, 10,000 steps, 8,000 steps, 12,000 steps. You know, I, I'm, typically of the belief, unless, um, no, even if someone else inspired you, I do think that it lit something up within you because it is connected in to a truth. That is, if you're generally leading a fairly aligned life, obviously, I think, you know, sometimes things can be distorted if you're a little bit, you know, completely out of touch with yourself. Um, but what it is, and I will say that in this case of like, when I would say like higher self challenge, what I've really come to is, and this is not shocking or anything like you talk about, it's like, essentially, this commitment to awareness throughout my day to mm. being conscious. And, you know, because it's it's in, of course, there are the rituals. And that's the f- kind of the fun, easy, easier sort of part, like, let me wake up and do this, like fun stuff and journal or whatever. But it's actually like this commitment, the harder work is like during the day, like, for example, today being at my parents being like, I am not going to be annoyed <laughs> with my <laughs> mom for, for wanting me to do right. this or like for my last night, my to come up north, my dad was like, woke, like, I'm such an early riser that by like 8pm, I'm like, I could pass out for the rest of the night. And my dad like, Mackenzie, it's time to go. And I was about to be like, Oh, like, I don't want to go. I just want to go to bed. Um, But it was that remembering that that coming back to and like, not about perfectionism, but like, is this how I would want when I'm like awake again, would I be happy I responded in this Mm, way? Yeah. You know, so ultimately, it's sim- it's kind of simply that, at least in this particular case, I would say. So this commitment to awareness, it's I, I like because you're bringing your, you know, like the ego likes challenge. And I'm, I'm talking ego in a good way. Yeah. You know, because we need ego to survive. So the ego needs challenge. And there's this dual, you know, yin yang. And you talked about in the podcast, you know, the yin yang type thing, you know, as above, so below. So we need ego and higher self. So the challenging part, the ego likes, you know, like, let's do this. We're going to go this way. Here's a mountain. Let's, you know, Mm -hmm. whereas the commitment to awareness, the higher self is coming in. And so you bring those two alignments together. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought was so cool with this. How would somebody, like, if you were coaching somebody and they were, what would you talk to them about how to set up a challenge or a goal setting when they've really probably never done it, they don't know, they're kind of confused about higher self in and of itself, you know, if, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. How, how would you approach the challenge and the goal setting with someone? Yeah, you know, I guess there are kind of like two things I'll say. The thing that's always worked for myself and then for people who are rather like-minded, and I'll say that as a caveat because I have clients who are not into meditation or visualization in the typical sense. And for them, I'm usually like, we'll brainstorm, what is this sort of creative connection? Like, is it a form of dance? Is it a form of singing or whatever? A lot of them seem to be like dance. So in that case, it would be like, you know, what comes through for you with the dance. But before I go there, let me just speak more clearly to the those who can use meditation and visualization and who don't get maybe overwhelmed by it and who can enjoy it because really simply the way that I would say it is you want to spend time in a intentional visualization, a mental rehearsal of sorts of how would it feel? How would I think if I was, let's say you have an external like 3d kind of earthly goal. Mm -hmm. I believe that we have these goals. They're just dangling carrots. Like, you know, the universe, God source, whatever, gives us these desires as a carrot to get us to this like next level of self. And so if we were to have that thing, that that carrot, if you were to have the money or the partner or whatever, how would you move through your life? Like what would the day to day sort of look like? And so that's why it's simpler to sort of walk someone through that. If just like do a visualization, spend some time, it can be five minutes. It doesn't have to be intense. There are plenty that are free um, online. I prefer Joe Dispenza's, but there are so many free ones. So who cares? Just go to YouTube, five minutes, future self, spend some time. And then if you're really not into that, you can set the intention through, through your dance to sort of do the same thing essentially, because it's all about you know, where you're allowing your mind to go, sort of that daydreamy process as well. And just let your body sort of, you know, 
guide you there. And, and the, 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 the dancers, the somatic kind of people, they already know, like, I don't really have to, they like that for a reason. So it's like finding the practice that would feel natural and good for you. And I don't believe in forcing traditional meditation on anyone. And then, but then essentially using that process of like visualization, mental rehearsal to walk yourself through and notice, notice how that self is and then notice the gap. And then how can you bridge that gap? And that's the work, right? Mm, that's good. That's good. And, and I know you use visualization, you know, visualization or journeying to kind of get in touch with the version of yourself who you're aspiring to become. You talked about that in the podcast. You know, I want to get in touch with the who who I, I want to be, you know, who my higher self is. Mm-hmm. What does that look like for you specifically with visualization or journaling? Is it a commitment that you make, even though you don't feel like it? And, and do you practice it, try to practice it daily? Do you do both or just one? How does that work? Yeah. You know, I do. And a lot of the people I work with do. And I guess it sort of like attracts like, because a lot of the people I work with, such, including myself historically, I can be very like rigid and very like just not sort of naturally by programming, whatever, um, can be quite intense. Um, so but I will say that said, I have kind of come out, I have healed quite a lot of that. So I am in a phase now, I'm just mindful of saying that because I know a lot of people who do connect with me are like, I like that doesn't work for me to do something every day. It's going to trigger my perfectionism. It's going to trigger my stress. So if anyone's listening who is that way, then sort of take it with a grain of salt, what I'm going to say, because I am at a point now where words like commitment and discipline no longer trigger me at all. Like that's totally cleared. And so at this stage in life, a few years ago, no, but right now it is actually a daily thing of at some point in the day, it doesn't have to be first thing. I'm going to do a 15 minute, you know, today it was longer, but some days it's 15 minutes meditation. I am going to journal. And that's because I've noticed that like, you know, vacation time, again, it, nice to be sort of laissez-faire for a little while, but I didn't feel maybe as, you know, good as I could have because these practices that do connect me in with that energy, that essence that I, that makes me feel alive and good and fully myself, like they weren't in my day. So, you know, for this month, like I'm going to do that every day and, you know, we'll reassess in September and you can reassess every day. Like you don't need to reassess you reassess it uh, every half a day or whatever and just see what suits you. But for myself, it is this, it is this commitment um, to be doing that every day. And, you know, it's felt really good. And I, I feel like I'm always caveating because it's like, you know, that doesn't mean that's what's right for you. It's for me in this particular season of my life, I was craving a little bit more intensity, uh, but not in the typical way, just like a little bit more structure, a little bit more, promises to myself that I wanted to make and fulfill and all of that. So that's awesome. On, on journaling for me, I found a thing is I don't like to write, but I like to talk, of course, mm. you know, podcasters. So <laughs> I just use, and I told you off air, we were talking about this, but I use uh, Apple notes and then I just ask myself questions. And then I talk like the journal. I talk, you know, like today, today's was what is wisdom to you? get a clear definition of what wisdom is for you, Jason. Mm-hmm. You know, so, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to nail that down. Like w- what is wisdom for me? You know? Wow. And so I did that through talking. I didn't write, you know, sometimes I'll type stuff if I, you know, if I'm in a hurry or, uh, you know, I'm waiting in line somewhere or something, mm-hmm. but journaling doesn't have to be by this leather book, you know, have this fancy pen and then I'm going to sit at a certain desk and play classical music and take 30 minutes and, yes. you know, write a manuscript. You know, you could do you could do journaling for 30 seconds. Yeah. You know, so 100%. throughout the day, like different times. Oh, yeah. How do you do um, visualization? Right. Do you so watch for- a video or listen to Joe Dispenza? Um. I don't like watch. I didn't like, I've never made, I know there's like apps in software and you probably know better than I do because you seem quite informed with the technology, but I know there are like, I don't know if it's called my movie or something like there is technology mm-hmm. where you can almost like create the the movie of your future or whatever. That sounds so cool. It also sounds like I don't want to put my, into so much energy into right, creating right, that right. kind of thing. So do you have a my, vision board or anything? Do you know? I think this is probably not uncommon. I probably, especially for women, 
I will go into Pinterest sometimes. I don't necessarily spend time yes, pinning yeah. things, but I like to just scroll because it's like a fun scroll. It's not like a social media scroll. It's just like mm-hmm. beautiful images. Um, but on the daily, it's it's really for me. And I wish sometimes I was like more quirky and I could like share like something like cool and new, but it's just like sitting down, closing my eyes and allowing particular images. And mm. at this point after, what month are we? About like... N- um, seven months into the year, I have certain images that are quite regular and they, they seem to flood in. So I'm going to trust them. And, and, um, and, but I do, I do love the, that though. Yeah. That is a quirky thing. That's cool. I like that. I never thought about that. I have the Pinterest account. I just haven't looked at it in years, but I used to do things that I thought were like cool or, or, you know, like they had man cave pictures, you know, or <laughs> homes that were kind of, you know, like modern and stuff. And, and I, I, I had forgot I put all that stuff in there where if I went through, I bet you could get that feed to just be your visualization. Like you could just scroll through there and visualize stuff because totally. it has everything I would imagine. Yeah, that's such a good point. And I think, you know, you and well, I you came seem- up with it. Well, but I, I you know, <laughs> I think you and I are pretty aligned on the fact that things don't have to be so like one way. They don't have to be. Yes. So- so it's so yeah. annoying to me when I think of that because only because it like, keeps people out. It's almost like this, like, mm-hmm. and then you work with people or you talk to people on a podcast and you're just like, but I think especially when you work with people, you're like, this isn't how most people are. Most people don't like to do this thing. So therefore mm-hmm. this cannot be the only way. So yeah, you don't have to go said. to India, go talk to a guru or go to the jungles of South America and do ayahuasca to have an awakening. Yeah. <laughs> so people are waiting and then they're saving up money. And then it's like, no, 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 you can, you know, you could, uh, what, what was it? Uh, Mother Teresa said that you can have an awakening just looking at the dirt in your fingernails if you're fully aware. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I so, love that. You know, yes. so I think that's the, I think that's the whole thing. It's like when, especially when it comes to visualization or trying to get in touch and uh, you use that word like that, that, I mean, that's kind of physical, like touching, but it's how do I touch the version of my spell self I'm aspiring to become? Like when you walk through that process, what does that look like for you? Right. Yeah. It's, there's a few things that I'll say. Um, there's, there is sort of that somatic bodily feeling. Um, and there are, and this is where, you know, that sort of mental rehearsal for everyone, for each themselves, it would be, um, helpful to do because then you would be able to notice what that is for yourself but mine specifically and it might be some other people's let's say signature um is quite calm like in terms of like my muscles and my stomach like areas that I might have anxiety sometimes are just calm like my stomach my chest there's that like total like internal physical peace as well as like a feeling a sort of lightness so these are like the mm. physical things and then Every time I end up kind of getting there, um, and this just lasts during the visualization, but I end up getting like full body goosebumps. So that's when I kind of know that I'm like, okay, I just mm. like hit like that signature. I know what it is. It's that lightness. It's a bit of a hum of, um, somebody asked me this. So I actually like know all the kind of like ingredients, um, but like, right, right. I'm like a little bit of a hum, almost like maybe that's in the mind that sort of inspired buzzy kind of feeling but mixed with a calmness so that's the physical thing that I tend to notice whenever I'm in the visualization like you know when I am in this this version of self I I I, you know again things like you know someone wants to do something at a time that I don't want to do it's a it's like a it doesn't stress me out it doesn't like make me clench it's just like almost like a breath and like okay like not to say to be a people pleaser, but you know, like in certain circumstances, yes, like cho- yes, yes, yes. choose your, choose your, where you're going to put your energy kind of. And, and, and also on the other hand, that's maybe the feminine energy on the masculine side. It could be, um, noticing where, you know, you can gracefully and eloquently like kind of put your foot down and feel that peace with, nah, that's okay. That's not for me. And just noticing mm-hmm. again, both the physical as well as like a little bit of the thought process or the the ways in which you would engage generally with the world like 
How do you respond? What is the tone? There's, you could go through like all the other things as well. How do you dress? How do you carry your posture? Like there are so many details, but for me, it's mostly the thought process as well as like the somatic kind of feeling. Mm, I love the somatic part. I'm yeah. thinking of that right now. Like you were talking about, you know, your, your not, not being irritated, but like, you know, having to be present with your mom or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. you're there, you know, and I, I, I have a situation that I have to address and I can feel it in my back. Like, you know, wow. I always feel like in my shoulders, like I'm carrying a burden, you know, like mm-hmm. if you have a, if you're hiking and you have a backpack on, that's what it mm-hmm. feels like. I, I've gotten in touch to know. And, and what you're saying, and, and I like this, this is really, really good. You know, that if through that feeling of restriction that you're feeling in your body, the tenseness that you're not that's going to restrict you from being in touch with your higher self. And so you, you work on like whether through meditation or something to relax those parts of your body, to bring awareness to them, loving awareness to them, and then allow that to shine through. Like, how does that work? Cause I I know this is what you do for a living. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you know what, if I was working with someone that would be um, pretty much the process, right? It would, it would be that much more conscious and intentional. I think for myself, And I think anybody can. It's just through practice, right? But there is almost like a click and a drop in almost right away for whatever reason at this point where like once I can, um, you know, a lot of the time and I'm sure you've felt it with like a meditation or some sort of practice, the beginning you're kind of like trying to like just like let your ego like quiet down a little bit. So there's a little bit of a battle in the beginning. Once Mm -hmm. it's quieted down, there's usually, at least for myself, it's like it's quite a fast drop in actually of, mm. you know, everything kind of settles. And I don't necessarily, cause I'm, I'm similar to, I like got a lot of stuff here, kind of like back of my shoulder neck. I think that's common for, for people. Um, I, so I'm not necessarily intentionally being like, okay, calm your shoulders. It's more like once, as soon as I'm in this, I may be seeing the visuals, I'm seeing a home or I'm seeing a scenario and um, it just happens. And I guess that's kind of what happened. Like when our lives are aligned, like we, our bodies do more naturally relax, but as like a <clears throat> a practice to do with someone, I think that's what you said is like the best, is probably the best way, like maybe body first sometimes mm, yeah I, I think it's more it's more physical of course so it, it it's not so and, and like you had said earlier we're both good at this you know it, like trying to get the woo-woo out you know to yeah. the point of where it's it's so esoteric that people feel like they can't do it i uh-huh. mean obviously spirituality and you being a spiritual being that's what you are mm-hmm. so it's not hard mm-hmm. you know you know what i mean so if we're making but you know our ego likes to make things hard you know, we're Sisyphus, you know, always trying to push the rock up the hill, you know, when it, the universe is like, no, you know, I, I've created all this. You're a created powerful being. You you don't yeah. have to do that. And, yeah. and that's speaking of the next one. You talked about in your podcast the idea of taking yourself seriously in pursuit of your dreams. This is a big one. I, I have a, a lot of conversations with younger people on this one. They they have this idea, you know, and, and you know this as well as I do because you're a lot younger than me. But – this this thing of like I haven't really had hard times. I'm talking like 1930s depression times, you know, and and maybe you've had like really tough times. I don't know your whole life, but I think a lot of young people like the worst thing that's ever happened to them maybe is you know they got they had a, a breakup in a relationship or something like that. But they've had a phone, they've had their needs met. They've never you know my story is you know we talked about that. I was homeless and you yeah. know had had you know all of those things. So taking yourself seriously, if you've never, for some reason, you have to kind of get to a super low point to get there, you know, and I don't know why as humans we're that way, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. how do you take yourself seriously in pursuit of your dreams when everything kind of is halfway mediocre, pretty cool in your life? Like not enough to motivate you. You know what I mean? Right. It's that's tough. Actually. I think, because, and I don't want to sound just like kind of too like blunt about it, because I do think ultimately it's, it is a choice. Like it is a point mm-hmm. where you do just have to make a choice. But obviously the emotion of it all, you know, if you're not feeling motivated, if you're feeling kind of, and I think that's where I was, honestly, for like a few years, it was like, 
And it's sort of like, I feel like there's a lot of like terms for this, but like not golden handcuffs, but sort of like you're in, you know, I was doing, I had my marketing business. I was fine. There wasn't like a huge, uh, motivation. You weren't great. You were fine. Precisely. Yeah. Yeah. And there, there just became a point for myself and maybe this, I don't know if this is how all humans are. It does seem to be how a lot of us are, where you just something like snaps and it doesn't have to be your world uh, crumbles. It could be, I mean, you've been through your own version of maybe the more dramatic sort of intense experience. Mm -hmm. Um, for a lot of people that I've worked with, including, and then including myself when I work with myself, but it's like, um, you almost get frustrated with yourself. You get to this point where you're just like, and I've seen that in a lot of people. It's like, I'm just so tired of basically my Mm -hmm. bullshit, my stories. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of, um, I had, had a client say something recently where she was like, I'm just so tired of like. Um, this issue basically like I'm tired of talking about it I'm tired I'm like just tired like I and that's almost like um, a, maybe a softer breaking point because like you know you could go on except for that like emotional kind of piece that's like I can't I actually cannot go on in this in this way <laughs> right 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 and that is a gift like ultimately I view that like holy cow like thank you you got me to this point of like being just whatever it is, sometimes for me, it would be like jealousy. Like why, like this person has this, like, and then like McKenzie, and then like just coming back to yourself, like, well, you're making this choice. You're making the choice not to do that thing. Yes. Yes. So. So the frustration, I want to get into this. This is really good. What you just said, this is because there's a ton of people. I mean, I've been this way too. I think we all have, but there's a ton of people that are just, they, they're just like stuck in the mud. Like they don't know what the hell to do. They're super frustrated with themselves and then you know of course the ego says well you're not good enough Uh you know it's going to play that role constantly you know i was watching a video the other day of a guy on he's real popular on instagram and in he's was talking to this lady and she started crying and she's like you know it's kind of like a tony robbins type thing yeah but she's like yeah i'm just not good enough you know and and it's like i don't think i could be that person Mm -hmm. do you know what i mean so that Mm -hmm. frustration comes in because it's like yeah i have i'm making money it's not great it's like you said everything's fine i have an okay relationship i have an okay house i have an okay car you know all all the things that i can go on a vacation occasionally as long as i watch my money that type of thing how would you like because i mean obviously you've dialed this in it for yourself like you're really working on this in pursuit of your dreams how do you get past the frustration I think you almost like kind of need to have a sort of pep talk with yourself, you know, like you need, you're not meant to stay there. I think that's part of it. It's like, you know, you go down these, these spirals and Mm. there comes a point where you just, you, you need to be your own best coach, your best therapist. Like you need to be that person that's like, you know, many times before that, like years before that, when I was 21 or two or something like that, um, maybe more of a drastic thing because I did go through like a year of like working corporate, like totally depressed like, and, and all of that. And what came through to me at the time was, and I will never forget it, just like this like line, like the zing came through my mind and call that God, whatever. But like this, this line come through and it was like, no one is coming to save you. Like you have to mm-hmm. be your own like white knight basically. Yes. Right. Um, and that realization of even if you have people around you, it's like I had this um, cause my, my dad is like always been very supportive, but I had this realization at this, at this job that I was working at being like, your dad's got other stuff to do. So if you want to get out of this, he's not going to get you out of your job. Like, I, I think I had this, like this, <laughs> right, um, right. because he, my dad grew up very like, you know, n- not really money, like just quite a poor. So he, as a response to that has been such a, a giving and a doting kind of father. Mm-hmm. And so I think the downside of that is that up until like 21, I was kind of like, dad can help me. Like if I have an issue, he can help me. Like he's, that's Mm -hmm. how our dynamic has been. He can help me. At 21, I realized he's got a lot of, he has a business to run. Like he's not, 
yes, he's probably thinking of you every day, but in not in that kind of way. Like not like let me get me let, let me find Mackenzie another job. Like I like I had to grow right, up in that right, in right, that right. moment. <laughs> and I think that's the thing. And it sounds harsh, but I do think whatever age you are, you need to grow up in that moment and realize like I'm and I and I feel like I can say that because I. I, I swear some of my clients are like the most sensitive people I've ever met and they have been able to do that for themselves. And so just knowing them, if they can say like, I'm, I can, I can not be the victim and I can actually be my own best advocate, et cetera, my own best guide, then I really think anyone can, not because they're so poor and weak, but like these are people who have had multiple traumas and super, sen- super, super sensitive. And I've seen them do that for themselves so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I watched a podcast with the guy. Uh, he's like a, a runner, marathon runner type. Cameron Haynes is his name, and he has a T-shirt. And I end up buying it from his website. So merch works, guys. If if it's good, but it said nobody cares, work harder. But what what he's talking about is when he says nobody cares, that sounds super harsh, like mm-hmm. you were saying. Mm-hmm. But it's like basically what he's saying is, like you were saying with your dad, you're not the center of attention. You're not. Yeah, you're not the narcissistic, egoistic person that everything has to revolve around you. You're not the center of the world. There's how many other people were working for your company beside you, you know? Yeah. Like you're a blip, you know what I mean? In the yeah. company, I'm a blip in, a, in, you know, in my company and the things I do. If my podcast goes away or I go away, there'll be some people sad. But at the end of the day, within a few days, they're going to start watching Netflix again. Exactly. You know what I mean? And, and move on with their life. You know, yeah. I, they're not going to, they may think about me and kind of get bummed out. But they got their own life to live, Mm -hmm. you know? So I think so many people, they get frustrated and discouraged because they're like, are you'll hear this whole thing about, you know, I'm an, everybody's an empath, you know, like Mm -hmm. I'm an empath, you know, I'm an empath. A lot of that is just you being so Mm self-absorbed and so selfish and thinking about yourself first and then putting conditional love on everything that you do, Mm -hmm. you know, it's exhausting. And that's why mm-hmm. people have so many mental health issues. I believe this is just my personal opinion. I agree. It's we're, we're just running around conditioning and judging everything to what we feel we deserve. But then we turn around and we like feel like we're not good enough. So it's like <laughs> this narcissistic mirror that we keep looking at, mm-hmm. you know, that, that doesn't allow us to be able to move from it because we're so mesmerized by it. Yeah. You know, ourselves. Yeah. We, we just love ourselves, but then we hate ourselves at the same time. So it creates this mental health insanity thing, you know? Yeah. I think that's no, what keeps yeah. us stuck. I would love, I actually have a question for you. Cause I was having almost this conversation last night with my dad and we were driving up here. Cause, um, we were, um, we were talking about, you know, why do exactly kind of what you said, like some people kind of essentially getting stuck there. And I think the thing is, whoever is going to come to someone like a coach, they aren't those people. So actually, Mm -hmm. I don't, I actually don't know those people, except for family members. I've seen like just like some relatives and stuff. But up close and personal, I haven't met those people because those are not the people who are going to come to coaching. But when I was talking to my dad, I'm like, you know, and he's like, oh, that's interesting. Like he didn't maybe expand on it in the way I think you could or would Mm -hmm. maybe. But I was like, what if that's their soul contract? Like if they're going to be there, mm. was this the lifetime where mm-hmm. that was the contract? Mm-hmm. I don't know if you yes, have thoughts yes. on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, this is a perfect example because I was talking to somebody yesterday and, and I had gotten kind of a download for them. Um, they, they were like seeking some advice and stuff. And two things they have done in their life. They're like 32, 33. They, they had a whole generations and generations of poverty in their in their home and also addiction. Like mm-hmm. alcoholism. 13 years been sober. This person's been sober since their early 20s. And also they uh, have 27 apartments that they own, multiple homes that they own. So I'm like, that, exactly, sole contract. That I was like, do you realize what you just did mm-hmm. and what you're doing for your children right now? You broke generational, if you want to call them curses or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, you that may, I said, that could be, that's it for your life. Mm-hmm. It's the next generations that you, the the children that you have, the three children that you have, they're not going to know what poverty is. They're going to only know what abundance is because that's what you teach them all the time because it's very mm-hmm. spiritual and understand that. And as a number two, they're not going to know what addiction is because, you know, they've never seen you with alcohol or never seen you, you know, where you saw your family fight and get drunk mm-hmm. at every, you know, event. And so I, I think like you were saying, and I, a lot of people... 
I don't want to give people excuses because this mm-hmm. has happened too. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm being more blunt, but yeah, people will take something just to be lazy. That's like, what well, I, this is my sole mm-hmm. contract. Yeah. That was my conflict as well. That's why I was like, I actually don't know where I land with that. It came to my mind. Maybe. I don't know. But I was curious where, where you landed on that. <laughs> yeah. because And you talk about this in the podcast. And I think we'll go right into this part because this is beautiful. The balance between taking oneself seriously and maintaining lightness. Yeah. You know, and you were talking about that in the podcast. Yeah. Um, and then, and I think also, cause you always like in your podcast, that's why I encourage people to download it. You always have like the black and the white, the yin and the yang, the as above, so below. And then you get into not just maintaining lightness, but then taking oneself seriously. You get into spontaneity and adventure. Right. You know, in that same, and that's those two things. Yeah. What does it look like? Uh, cause you travel a lot. What does it look like? Cause I think some people are stuck because they haven't had an adventure, whether it's bad or good. You got to go on the hero's journey. You can't stay in the village. Yeah. Yeah. So you mean adventure like metaphorically, right? Like not, or do you, yeah, or, you or like going, or just, you know, I talk to so many people and they haven't traveled outside the United States. It's yeah. like you haven't gone to Canada or Europe or, right. you know, Bali or Thailand. It's like go someplace, like just go. Like it doesn't cost, yeah. it's cheaper to live over there. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, and that is sort of, um, I suppose, kind of the the lightness, like the seriousness is like, you know, I'm going to take myself seriously. I'm not going to, because I had this thing and, and I don't know, again, I don't want to gender it too much, but I don't know if it's more female, a little bit of being like, you know, whatever. I'm like this creative person and like I write and I do this kind of marketing and like, yeah, like whatever. Like I can talk to people and just like kind of live up here and like be serious with myself, but like privately. And then like to like be like, no, no, no. Like I can ground all of that and like take and like and still be this creative person, but like ground it all and like be seated in myself and like have that. But then the lightness is like, is like it's like it can be joyful is it can be it can be as you were saying like it can be an adventure it can be i mean it doesn't have to be as like i, I mean my lifestyle is definitely not for for everyone and and, and it's not going to be this way forever of like constantly flitting or not even flitting but just like living between a few at this point kind of like two countries and um But, you know, we're figuring that out, but it's like, it's a little bit of that. And I think you, um, I don't remember if you, you mentioned this today or another, but there's like a bit of that, like flexibility, like not needing to be like, just so, Mm. again, it's like almost that somatic thing of like being like rigid and like, okay, so like, because I'm taking my, my dream seriously, like that means that, you know, (laughs) no more joy and like Mm -hmm. every day like nine to five i mean maybe nine to five works for you but it's just like kind of checking yourself like checking are Mm. you are you taking yourself seriously or are you being like anxious are you being yes yeah that's that's good yes (laughs) yeah and that's because taking yourself serious and taking and being anxious are two different things yeah um one is very restrictive and you'll feel it like if you're if you're let's we'll use your thing if you're scrolling on pinterest and for some reason, you keep seeing pictures of, you know, Bali. And and then it you could imagine, you visualize, that's what it is. Vis, you visualize yourself on a, a yoga mat in Bali and at the beach. Go in that direction. Like yeah. something, the universe is speaking to you. And you talked about this in the podcast. Um, You know, how you can talk to the universe for signs. You know, like, because I don't think a lot of people, I have conversations with my higher self every day. You know, I talked when I wake up in the morning, I'm like, hire self, lead me, guide me, allow me to show love to others. Mm-hmm. Um, ego, you know, get the hell out of the way. Let's go hire self. You know, like, <laughs> I'll do stuff like that, you know, because I'm more like that. masculine type, you I know. Love that. Yeah. 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 So it, it's, it's, it's that, you know. And then at nighttime, I'm like, I want to remember my dreams because I know my higher self is going to talk to me subconsciously. Yeah. So, you know, and I know that that's symbols and the language of dreams is the higher self, you know, clearing things out and, and talking to me through dimensions and all that. And I don't want to get too woo woo, but mm-hmm. how do you know the universe is giving you a sign? I guess, I guess if I, if I'm just being totally honest, like a, a lot of that is trust, right? Is, tr- is like, you know, 
for example, if you ask, and I think a very common one, and I think it might be Gabby Bernstein who popularized like the blue butterfly, like, Mm -hmm. you know, you could be skeptical and be like, it's summertime, there are butterflies, like whatever. Um, Or you could be like, you know what, this morning I set the intention to see a, a butterfly, like, why don't I, and who cares? Like, who cares if it's mm-hmm. like, why don't I use this as an opportunity to like change my energy? Because that's like all it is, at least for myself. It's like this opportunity to be like, oh yeah, like this is how I want to live. And what, what, the reason I love it is because it's so simple. And there's a period where I struggled to like get back on the meditation wagon, which mm-hmm. I, it makes me feel good, but I was just like, I was like, I, I'm not there right now. So instead, I did exactly what you're saying. I did kind of like prayerish kind of things in the morning, in the evening, or throughout the day. Or actually, I was alone for like two months without my boyfriend. So I was just talking all day, like all day, like hey, <laughs> <laughs> like a t- complete That's psycho, awesome. yeah. And um, it uh, it makes on on a light note, it makes life just so much more magical. Um, which is a huge thing because again, that's all part of like that energy and it really does change things. But I guess the short of it is, I guess you don't know, I guess you have to, I guess Mm. that's where faith comes in and you go, I set, I set this intention here. It is right now. Again, it's like, I have a choice. I have a choice to be a skeptic and to lean into whatever, like, I mean, that's not my personality anyway. That probably would never happen for me, but why don't I just take this as an opportunity to just be like, thank you. Like to be yes, thankful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's, I like that. Yeah. And I, I think synchronicities, Carl Jung talks about this, you know, like for me, I can, I've really gotten in tune with it as far as the universe giving me signs. Just, I'll use something super simple. Mm-hmm. Uh, vacation last year. I really wanted to go. I had never been to Naples, Florida, and I've heard so much about it. And I don't know if you've ever heard of that or not. Or I've heard like of it, but I've never been. It looks beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It's it's on the Gulf side. It's straight across from Miami, like directly across. You know, so during the winter time, you know, I either go to Mexico or Florida or someplace warm because I hate yeah. cold. You know, yeah. But I mean, where you're from, it's crazy. But yeah, um, <laughs> I, if I have to wear a scarf, I'm out. Like I'm <laughs> done. Like no scarf. I want to wear shorts and flip flops. You know, twenty four. I can see you in a scarf, though. I feel like you could rock a scarf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I could wear them. Yeah, I have all that stuff. But, uh, but I prefer to be at a beach or something like that. So, um, I was like, should I go to Florida or not? You know, like when and and time. And I started doing all this, and then I that same day I drove just around town just to do normal stuff like gym and stuff like that, and I saw four Florida plates. Now it could be it could be like oh I just noticed it because I've been thinking about it and they've been there everywhere but I'm in New Mexico mm-hmm. like you know Albuquerque New Mexico that's way way far away from Florida so mm-hmm. you know and um Carl Jung talked about that with the rocks you know he would find this certain type of rock that doesn't belong it's not indigenous to where he was at you know and so but it would just this red rock would just keep showing up wow you know so he's like, well, this is the universe, you know, speaking to me. And, and I think it's very important to find those synchronicities yeah. because for me, it's kind of like, it, it's even if it's not real, whatever, it yeah. still gives me a sign to pause and be like, am I headed on the right direction? Exactly. Is this a sign higher self to, for me to go in this direction? You know, whether, whether it is a vacation or whatever. And it turned out went on the vacation was absolutely amazing. Mm. If none of that was real, I still had an amazing vacation and, Absolutely love Naples, Florida. It's super beautiful, um, very quiet, opposite of Miami. You know, I'm too old for Miami now. So right, I mean, uh, I don't it, like Miami. I'm like 30. <laughs> <so I don't. laughs> yeah, if staying up late at night in a club doing cocaine does not sound fun to me at all. Like, no, I'm out. I like the music, but <laughs> but you know, I, I I can't handle that. I, sitting on a beach and relaxing and uh, reading my Kindle is yeah, about as is about as uh, as crazy as I can get. But uh. Like, because this is really important when you're talking about asking universe for a sign Mm -hmm. and then you're, you're talking about in the podcast, you talked about the balance between setting specific goals and then remaining open to surprises of the universe. And that, that's what we're talking about is that lightness and being serious. Yeah. The surprises from the universe is the synchronicity and that's the spiritual side. The specific goals can kind of be more of what you're doing, but how do you when you talk to your clients and stuff like that, how do you have them have that balance where they're not being so rigid 
mm-hmm. where they can't see the sides from the universe, if that makes sense. Yeah. It sounds so boring to always be like, oh, you know, it's about intention and awareness, but really it, it kind of is. It's like, you know, you you want to yeah, set your goals because again, it will pacify the ego. It will give and also it will give you like real direction. It will it mm-hmm. will give you that. But you do want to stay, and I think for me, honestly, some of the staying open to the surprises is not even as maybe magical as it might sound, but also just like noticing my own interests. Because sometimes I think I want to go in a direction. Mm, that's good, yes, yes. And then I'm like constantly pulled to like, mm-hmm. I want to watch this YouTube video, I want to read this book, or I just want to mm-hmm. think about this kind of thing, or um, maybe it's a learning direction, or as you were saying, like it's a travel direction or, or whatnot, but... Um, so yeah, have your goals, but then like, also just like, have, like have enough, uh, flexibility, I guess I suppose, like suppose with yourself, like, for example, if you wanted to, if it made you set you up, it set you up mentally, energetically to like read every morning, maybe you don't need to, to be like, it has to be a business book or it has to be a personal growth book. Like maybe that day you want to read a novel or you want to read a travel guide or I don't know, whatever, just, um. I think a little bit of like the, you want that, maybe that container again for like Mm -hmm. direction and clarity and whatnot, but at least being open to, you know, tomorrow when I- You're good at that though. Like, cause last year you did something I thought was really cool. I mean, you always posting cool, cool stuff, but you were in like a little shop or something and this really resonated with me. So I think there was like a a message. I took it for me and I ended up buying the book, but you posted an Italian book. Um, it was like in this, you probably don't even remember it, but it's in like this cute little shop or whatever. Yeah. And there was an Italian book. And then um, I was like, why is this book resonating so much with me? You know, so then I looked it up, bought it on Amazon, of course, and got it. But it was like um, just little things like that. It's like, what what's resonating? I mean, obviously, it had to resonate enough with you where you posted mm-hmm. it, mm-hmm. you know, in the little bookstore shop that you were mm-hmm. in or whatever. Mm-hmm. But why, why can't we have that lightness and just go with that? You know what I mean? Right. Like, what does it hurt for me to buy an Italian book? Exactly. Exactly. And I think that's like, I, it was both of us saying it actually, like, but you, you pointedly said like anxi- anxiety is a different feeling than like, you know, and I think so often, I don't know, it's like a slippery slope or something for us. It's like, okay, I have this goal and now Uh, now it must be this way. And then like everything gets rigid and we just, you know, it's not about being perfect here, but it's just, again, like as basic as it sounds, like, gosh, just like try to be as conscious as you can about like how you're actually feeling in your body, in your mind. Yeah. I love that. I know we got, we're we're already hit an hour. This is so crazy. So I have one last question. (laughs) I want to go over with you. You touched on the idea in the podcast of energy and abundance. How do you, and we talked about this a little bit earlier, but how do you check your energy levels? How do you guard your energy levels? What are some of the things that you do for, for to make sure that your energy is good in interactions? Yeah. There, um, for example, like even, I guess, specifically with abundance because I do have like a history of being and I don't think it's I think it's good to be mindful of how you spend for example like you know don't don't be crazy but also there's a point where you can be like so frugal you're basically Mm -hmm. in scarcity and so like there are like moments where I'm where it's my actions that will kind of uh signal to me and then there are Mm -hmm. moments where other people's actions will signal to me so um for example, like I've, I've, or I've heard from like a friend who doesn't have much money, like just the story of how they went to buy like a bunch of fruit or something for family members. And I, and it like struck me in that moment and really like stayed with me where, where I was kind of like, would I do that? Like, I like it kind of like, it really struck me because I thought I'm like, that is so beautiful. Like this person's already struggling with their money. And because also their extended family is struggling with money, like that's not necessarily something that might check you during the day. But I guess if you thought about that, you might consider like where your energy is at. But in terms of like moving through your own day, like there are moments where you're um, 
I guess, again, specifically with this, if you're going to buy something, like, do you have that, that kind of tightness again within your body of like, (gasps) like, I like, you know, spending money on this, like, bad, you know, kind of like, it's almost like that animal reaction, like, this is, this is bad. This is, this is, this is dangerous. And it's not that that's, you know, bad, right? It's just to be aware of that, because maybe you could spend 30 seconds, (laughs) you know, calming your body, reminding yourself if you if you you know I can afford this or if you can't you know I'm making there's a way for me you know you probably have some sort of situation sorted out where someone's supporting Mm -hmm. you and in this moment I can afford this and so sometimes it's just those little moments throughout the day of like how am I responding did my body just contract and how can I like even if it's a somatic thing, how can I, and I like find myself doing this in meetings. If something gets tense, I'm like rubbing my leg, no one can see. And I'm like right. calming myself down. And like, you know, sometimes it's just those like moments throughout the day. How did I respond? And that's why, again, as boring as it sounds, it's like almost every answer comes down to that, like awareness and that commitment to conscious consciousness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, I had to learn a lesson a long time ago with abundance in the sense of like, just because I want to buy something, you can buy something out of lack Mm because I feel like I'm not good enough. So, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's scarcity. You're buying something, you're spending money because you have a lack of something. So, you know, asking your higher self, like, does this meet the the higher purpose for me? Oh, cool. It's an amazing suit. And I haven't had a bespoke suit before, you know, so Mm -hmm. I'm going to spend thousands of dollars so that I look nice on the suit. That's great, you know? Yeah. But it's like, what? But if you're, if the whole time you're feeling guilty, because you're buying something, you have to find, like, become more self aware and understand, like, why am I feeling guilty? Mm-hmm. You know, and I, and I found that, like, even when you, when you start getting money, if you don't work on this, the energy of abundance, if you don't work on it, when you have lots of stocks, you're going to check it like three times a day. Right. And then the market's going to go down 700 points like it did. It two just days did. Ago. Yeah, I'm just going <laughs> to freak out. You're going to be like, oh my God, I, I lost, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Exactly. Or the worst is when you have to pay taxes. Right. And you get the tax bill and you own a business. And yeah. next thing you know, you get a bill for 70 grand and you got to write a check. So yeah. I always tell people, people I always laugh because I was like, have a lot of money and own businesses and then see how conservative you get towards taxes. You know, like you, you could be a pretty liberal person, but when you're like writing yeah. tens of thousands of dollars yeah. check to the yeah. government yeah. every quarter, you know, oh, for, yeah. for payroll taxes and all that, it's funny. I mean, that's so why people that, move that, to the it Bahamas. Doesn't, <laughs> to yes, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't, and your dad would probably testify to that, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't change with more money. Right. You can still, like there are billionaires that have a scarcity mentality. Like, yeah. Uh, they, I watched an interview the other day and the guy's like, well, I have to work, you know, even harder because when I go to Monaco, I have one of the smaller yachts, right. you know, so. <laughs> I know it's, I mean, it's, it's crazy. I used to work for someone of that caliber and, you know, there's so much that's hard that can be challenging being in that group. And one of the main things, and this relates to that, but I, I don't know, just like gave me so much empathy. And I guess it stuck with me all these years, like 10 plus years later and, he like such a a struggle for him was like not being able to like talk to many people about kinds of things because nobody would be like oh you're not relatable like you're Mm -hmm. oh poor you poor you like anything poor you um but it is that's a real like um i mean it sounds ridiculous to uh, uh, you first hear ridiculous but the emotion Mm -hmm. not that i've been i mean that's not me but from what i saw with him and like the emotion is is still like a real thing to move through and so mm-hmm. you know being aware that you may as well do it you know um at well, we've all experienced year. that yeah. we all we, we've all had where we didn't have hardly any money and mcdonald's was a lot of money and yeah. then now you could go to mcdonald's or any place and just you know or go out to eat and you don't think twice about it you know yeah. so we've all and that's the same with the billionaire He's just, you know, like a, a, I had one guy tell me, I was like, oh, that's a really nice watch, you know? And I was like, mm-hmm. that's about a hundred and forty, hundred fifty thousand dollars watch. And he mm-hmm. goes, he goes, it's just zeros, Jason, at some point. Like he goes, what that, that's like $140 to me, you know, right. $140,000 is 140. It's like, that's not a lot of money at all. Like, yeah. you know, and we all look at that and be like, that's crazy, right. but it's still, it, it's, it's, it's energy. Money's energy, you know? Yeah. So how yeah. you react to that energy you know, for me, it's kind of like, what what relationship am I in with money? 
do I have a great relationship? You know, I had a very abusive relationship with money. Like it was, you know, if I look at money as a relationship, like, uh, like a lover, uh, you know, a, a friend, uh, a spouse, you know, if I look at money like that, how am I treating it and how is it treating me? Wow. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, yeah. you know, and then if you, if you look at it that way, then it's like, oh, it, there, it's never enough. I need more. You know, I can trade my health, you know, for money. I won't go to the gym today. I'll just work more. Why, mm-hmm. why do I feel like I have this lack where I need to work 12 hour days, you know? That's All those it. things. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. W- whenever you're looking at abundance and you talked about this in your podcast with your boyfriend, you guys were at a restaurant, you know, and mm-hmm. then you guys were talking about like, you were like, you know, like splitting it, splitting the bill and all those different things. Yeah. <laughs> does it go, does it go in your mind? Do you still have like, cause you, you like you said, you were like, have a frugal mindset. Yeah. Do you still get triggered by stuff like that? Or have you worked through those triggers? You know what? Um, they, I think they're, it's like, I'm at the point where they're like on their way out, but not that they're not still, they don't, it's one of those, it's like a mindful practice. So mm-hmm. it, I might, I, I kind of notice it still. So it'll still like come up as like a trigger would, but I'm very quick to be like, this is actually an opportunity, Mackenzie, um, sort of, you know, do all those things that even you mentioned before, like relax, like, you know, not just like relax, but like relax your body, like, um, and kind of talk, talk myself through it. And I really am at this point where I'm just like, this is a growth opportunity. Keep mm-hmm. viewing it as a growth opportunity. So I'm not there where it's not coming up at all. I, I can't wait for, for then, but I'm in the, uh, if it spiked, it's now on the descend kind of. Yeah, Esther Hicks helped me with this a lot. You know, Abraham Hicks. Yeah, mm-hmm. do you do you listen to her? She 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 said something. She goes, "Money has to flow. It has to have energy. It has to go. It has to. You have to spend it. it has to move. Mm. You know." And then she goes, "You every time you spend money, you bless someone." Yeah, I love that. You know, if you if you buy a Mercedes Benz, it l- will go crazy. So let's say you buy uh you know a Mercedes Benz G wagon. Mm-hmm. There's people that made the tires that you're giving them uh, uh you're giving them a paycheck. There's people that make that work in the Mercedes-Benz factory, all of them have a paycheck because you're buying this vehicle. She goes, always look at like when you purchase something, how you're blessing other people by buying this thing. You know, or if you, you know, like a practice I have is if I go out to eat with somebody, I always pay for the meal, like regardless, Mm -hmm. uh, like business meals and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's a billionaire, I'm still going to pay for it. It's like, that's my thing. Mm -hmm. Like, because when I was young, I never was able to, we were raised super poor yeah. You know, and we never were able to go out to eat because we had sometimes we didn't have any food in our home. Yeah. So for me to go to a restaurant and blow, you know, a couple hundred bucks is is fun for me. It's yeah. super easy. And I want to bless other people with that. I want to go out to eat. I want to have fun. I want to, you know, drink and and you know, spend two or three hours and have conversations and talk. Yeah. So I want that to flow, you know what I mean? And I want to bless people. Yeah. You know, because but if I'm thinking like, oh shit, you know. Here, here, you know, this thing's going to be like every drink I drink is $14. You know? <laughs> right, right. <Yeah. laughs> I better only drink two, you know, or, yeah. you know, oh my God, you know, h- how much money do I have? Like, th- it's just automatically, it's like you can feel it. It's like restricting, yeah. you know, and then that's the energy. And then you go to work that way. So many people, you know, work a nine to five job, like you said, a, col- a soulless corporate job. Mm-hmm. And some people love it. And that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not a C-suite type person, you know, so I like corporate stuff. I'm into leadership and all that, nice. but some yeah. people l- can't handle that and they just don't like the, the rigidity of it. You know, they want to be like you, a coach and you can go to different countries and stuff like that and have fun. So I'm going to close on this, uh, McKenzie, um, because I could talk to you forever. I know. What is, what is it? What are you doing now? Like with your life in the sense of like your work? Are you taking on more clients? If somebody wants to have a conversation with you, are is there are you making courses? Like what's going on with you? You know, it's it's a nice time to ask that question because I got clarity in July. Like the the good thing about slowing down and being on vacation is your brain kind of works in the background and it's like mm-hmm. doing a lot of stuff. So it's still it's still going. 
in July, I realized I'm pretty much done, at least for now, you know, pretty much doing anything other than one-on-one coaching. Like I just want to go into it. And I've realized the reason I didn't for so long was there was shiny carrots. It was like, all my friends are doing this. My friends are doing that. Why don't I like there's app, blah, blah, blah. So now I'm like, <clears throat> the thing that brings me joy and also the thing that brings me historically financially resources. So why am I, why am I making this more difficult for myself ego? Um, I'm just going to go all in where it's always been working and, and, and find peace in, in that. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm open and that is absolutely my, my focus. If, going if, if somebody wants to do coaching with you, what's your website? Oh, it's just my name. So MackenzieBellCastro.com. And I'll put it in the, I'll make sure we have it in the link and all that stuff. And then, um, and they can also follow you on Instagram. Yeah, that's probably the, that's the easiest, the easiest place to go. And if there's resonance, then yeah, it would be nice to connect and hear from anyone that's in your community. I mean, I, as I said to you, you are, um, truly one of my favorite like minds and podcasters and <clears throat> so i'm sure that people that know you would be people that i would enjoy um even just dming with you know back and forth yeah 100 percent. yeah and i know that's what I always tell people you know everybody needs a coach everybody needs a mentor our multiple mentors you know um that that's kind of like an unlock a key when you realize that it's a superpower to spend money on yourself to get better at something you know Um, And that you're good enough to do that, like whether it's a personal trainer, whether it's a dietitian, whether it's, you know, if you can afford that, stop, be selfish and put yourself first in a good way Mm -hmm. and do something like this. So I encourage people to, if they resonate with you, to have a conversation with you and I'll make sure I put all those links on there. Thank you, Mackenzie. Appreciate it. There's another knocked out of the park. That's awesome. Thank you. All off of one 50 minute podcast you did i didn't even i had two pages of questions and i only got to one page so (laughs) oh my gosh i mean as you said we could talk forever it's always so fun to go back and forth with you i love i'm just so grateful awesome awesome well thank you again